Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. It's the 21st of August, a Tuesday, and in studio with us today, uh, the creator of this DVD called Genetic, The Genetics of the Incarnation and of the Resurrection. His name is Doug Hamp. Uh, Douglas Hamp. Hi, Doug. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thank Good you to have you at Prophecy in the News. We're doing some longer programs, which you'll see a, uh, in a few days from now. But uh, while he was here, I thought we should do a, a daily update so that you can kind of get to know him uh, yourself. This uh, DVD, which we're offering, The Genetics of the Incarnation, has an extremely important message, uh, Doug. I think every Christian should know precisely what this DVD says. It'll really bolster your faith, right? I, I think so. It has to do with the, the image of God, among other things. But it, we start off with, what is the image of God? Uh, this is a topic that I kind of came to with by surprise. I didn't expect to really get into that. But as I continued to do the research from my book, Corrupting the Image, I kept running into this, the image of God. It has to do with God making us in his image and in his likeness. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, that's great, but what is the image of God? And then I came to some, some exciting passages uh, in Ezekiel, for example. Ezekiel sees the cherubim, and on above the cherubim is, is, a, is a, a, uh, a platform, which uh, he calls a firmament of sapphire, and above that is a throne, and on the throne is the likeness of Adam. And then he says that there's fire coming out of from his waist up and from his waist down. And he also says something very interesting, that it, it's mingled with the color of amber. If you go back and look at that in the Hebrew, the color of amber is the Hebrew word chashmal. That gets translated into the Greek as elektros. Mm. And in English, it's electricity. And then you, you pair that with other passages in Scripture. We see in Revelation chapter 4, it says, out of the throne was coming lightning and thundering and peals of thunder, wow. etc. We see in... Mm -hmm. Psalm 97, <coughs> it talks about lightning that's coming out from God's throne. So there's, this, there's fire and electricity coming out of this person on the, th on the throne. And so you're saying that God, though he is a spirit being, has a discrete form which is described in the Bible. Absolutely. When you go to Daniel chapter 7, he says, I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated and his garment was white as snow, his hair was white as wool. So we know what color his hair is. We know that he wears a particular gown. Mm -hmm. We know that he has feet. Moses, Aaron, Nadav, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up the mountain, and they saw under his feet a pavement of sapphire. So we see this again and again. This, all these descriptions of what God looks like have often been termed as anthropomorphic language. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. a big word, and a few of us actually understand what that means, and so we say, oh, well, that must be true. What it means is that, that supposedly God or the Bible is using terms that we humans can understand. But mm -hmm. I think we need to call that into question and say, is that what Scripture is actually saying? How do the theologians actually know that? Because if we read the Scripture, we'll read all these different Scriptures, we see again and again and again that God's image is that he has a particular form and that we are created in that image and in that likeness. And this is important because man is intended to play a role in the kingdom of God. We are actually the children of God. It just makes sense that we would look like our father. It sure does. In fact, Seth, it says in Genesis chapter 5, looked like his father. It says that Adam had a son in his image and in his likeness, speaking about Seth. So Seth looked like his dad. We have children. They're in our image and in our likeness. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not to say that, that we somehow become gods or something like that. We're not saying that at all. N the Bible no. nowhere says that. But it does say that we're created in his image, but that image has been tainted. And that means that we need to have a redeemer who can restore us to that proper image. And we also see that in the age to come, when we have our new bodies, we're going to actually be emitting light, very much like how God is emitting light. Now, to let a little secret out of the bag, this uh, DVD is all about DNA and the information carried by DNA. And, and Doug takes it from the creation of Adam all the way down to the birth of Christ. And <clears throat> you make a, a, an interesting statement, and we'll just touch on it. 
And then in order to find out what he really says, you'll have to look at the DVD. But the idea is that, that Mary, when she gave birth to Jesus, was not simply someone who was carrying a child for someone else. She actually participated in the process. Right. In, in other words, her gamete, her egg, had half of the information. It had 23 haploid chromosomes, and then the Holy Spirit provided the other 23 haploid chromosomes. And at the conception of those two, when they fused, then they became diploid mm -hmm. chromosomes once again. So the difference here is, is that there wasn't any you know, sexual relation. And that's not that, but the Holy Spirit provided the information, the chromosomes, that were needed to create In the, other words, the zygote. She was not just a surrogate mother. Exactly. As you make the point so well in your DVD, she was much more than that. Yeah, because when we look at the terms, we see that she would conceive and bear a son. That's what Gabriel comes to tell her. We see that in Isaiah 7:14 that the virgin would conceive and bear a son. And we look at conceive and bear throughout the Hebrew Scriptures. We see that it's always talking about conception, which is a man and a woman, and then there's a process known as birth. So she was conceiving that she, she was contributing half of the genetic information. And it has to be that way because we're told that Jesus would come from Abraham, Isaac, mm -hmm. Jacob, <coughs> from David as well. In fact, it goes all the way back to Adam, that he would be connected to the human race genetically. And in that way, God pro provided uh, a pathway for you and I to enter into his presence as children. In other words, as restored children. Our DNA was damaged through Christ. He devised a method of restoring all of that brokenness and making it possible for us to become the adopted children of the Father. And we look like our Father. And you know, it's really interesting. When we look at the, the genetics and seed and all this stuff, it begins to make sense of a number of scriptures. First John 3, 9 says, No one having been born again continues to sin, for the seed of God dwells in him. The word there for seed is the word sperm. And it's when we understand that what is a seed, it's DNA, what's inside of DNA, information. Mm. Now it begins to make sense. Well, when you see the whole thing, you'll be as excited as I was. It, it's a brand new way of looking at salvation uh, uh, in modern terms, because we talk about DNA these days, and, and we talk about uh, the information carried by DNA and many, many other topics. Would you believe the Bible will, you know, has been talking about these things for centuries, millennia, and now we begin to know what the Lord actually did. And you can see it all in this DVD, the genetics of the incarnation and of the resurrection, by the way. <clears throat> 1995 plus shipping and handling. I just called the number on your screen right now. As a bonus, we're going to include this disc, which when uh, inserted into your computer will give you one of the best Bible study programs you've ever seen. It's called The Word. And uh, Doug, in just a, a few seconds, tell us about The Word. The Word is a very powerful resource. I use it for my personal Bible study. It has hundreds, uh, well about 150 Bible different translations, including the Hebrew and the Greek. It has Bible dictionaries, encyclopedias, commentaries, uh, just general books that are Bible related, plus maps and charts. Uh, it's all there on that one CD. It's an incredible resource. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. Absolutely free when you order. Doug's DVD, The genetic, Genetics of the Incarnation and of the Resurrection. Uh, I'm positive you will enjoy the DVD, and I know that when you see this Bible software, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> I looked at it, and I couldn't, this is, this is wow, what a, what a thing to be receiving absolutely free. It's wonderful. Okay, Doug, always good to talk to you. And we're going to have Doug back with us, so uh, stick around from day to day because we've got a lot of subjects to cover with Doug while he is here at Studios of Prophecy in the News. Gary Stearman, as we always say, we're watching. These are the days in which you should be watchful. And uh, most of all, keep looking up.